Hi all. Today we are going to learn about the phases of design process. So whenever we are planning to develop or model a new product, we have to carry out a certain set of actions in order to make the product a successful one. So what all are those steps or phases to be carried out while designing a particular product? So the typical design process consists of six phases. The first phase is identifying and detailing customer requirement. The next one is setting the design objectives. Then identify the various constraints. Then establish the functions. Generating design alternatives. And finally choosing the best feasible design. So let's understand what are the activities that is carried out during each of these phases. The first one is identifying customer needs. So whenever the customer approaches the developer or designer to develop a particular product for them, the customer will make a request. It is called as a client request. A client or a customer may submit a request for developing a particular product or artifact. The customer need should be expressed clearly. The more the customer expresses his ideas, the better the designer can design or model the particular product. The client may know only the type of product that they may need. For example, the client may say, I need a table. They may not be aware about the different types of table or the dimensions of a table, etc. Next one is modification of an existing design. Sometimes the client may ask for modifying the existing product. They want some customization in certain products or they may ask to change the shape, functionalities or materials used, etc. For example, there are different types of coffee brands like Brew in Escafe, Cafe Coffee Day Coffees, etc. All these coffee brands are using different flavors and different and different packaging of their products. Next is generation of an entirely new product. Most of the profit-oriented companies always do research to generate entirely new concepts and products so that they can rule the market. Example, most of the electronics companies are competing with each other to generate new televisions with new features and build materials. As we all know that the televisions that we used some 20 years before may be of CRT type or cathode ray tube type and then it changed to LED type, LCD type etc. And after that they have implemented 3D viewing, plasma TV etc. So every time the competing company is delivering new products with entirely new features and functionalities by doing a lot of research. Next is setting the design objectives. So in this phase we have to identify what are the requirements to be implemented in the developing product. Here we have to first do feasibility analysis. Feasibility is ensuring whether we can implement all the customer requirements using the existing technology or the allotted budget, time, etc. There are different categories of feasibility analysis. First one is technical feasibility. In this feasibility, we are ensuring whether the requirements can be implemented using the existing technology or not. In economic feasibility, we have to ensure whether all the customer requirements can be implemented within the allotted budget for that particular project or not. The next one is scheduled feasibility. We have to ensure whether the requirements can be implemented within the allotted time for developing that particular product. And the next one is social feasibility. In this feasibility analysis, we have to ensure that the product may not affect the society in a harmful manner. Next is we have to perform the market analysis. We have to analyze the market and identify what are the competing products and what are its exciting features so that we can develop a much better product with much exciting features. We have to identify the supplementary features that may be expected from this product by the various customers. For that purpose, we can circulate a questionnaire among the customers and based on the customer feedback, we can identify the supplementary features that may be expected from the product. Next one is document the finalized design objectives. Based on the feasibility analysis and market analysis, the designer has to document all the finalized requirements or design objectives that is to be implemented in the product being developed. This document acts as an agreement between the customer and the manufacturer. 
Example, system requirement specification document. Next is identifying the design constraints. Whenever the designer is designing a particular product, there may be some constraints that may impose some restrictions on the designer so that he cannot design the product in an easier way. There will be functional constraints. These constraints impose a limit on the proposed working principle of the product. Example, energy requirement like the product should be working on electricity or solar energy etc. Or there should be constraints on the materials used for development. For example, if you are developing a carry bag, then it should be it should not be plastic or it should be an eco-friendly material etc. So if we are imposing a restriction like it should be eco-friendly material for a carry bag, then we cannot use the raw material as plastic for making that. And there will be some overall geometry like it should be simple, small and easier to use etc. There will be some aesthetics like it should be visually pleasing or it should be good looking etc. So all these are considered as functional constraints. Next is safety constraints. Whenever we are designing a product, it should not impose a direct threat to the product or to the user. For example, operational safety constraints, environmental constraints, safety issues due to inevitable human errors etc. In a 3 pin plug top, the third pin will be of longer length and thick design. It is because to ensure the safety of the user. So this is considered as the safety constraint in developing a particular product. Next is time and economic constraints. Customer always expect quick delivery of the product with minimum cost. Demand of the product also leads to time and economic constraints. For example, in the current situation, if we are generating a vaccine for COVID, then it should be done in a much faster manner so that it can be sold out all over the world. So time and economics is a constraint. So the vaccine should be of low cost and it should be developed in a much faster manner so that we can circulate it all over the world. So time and economic constraints are a key factor in designing a particular product. Next is legal, ethical and quality constraints. We cannot directly or simply make a particular product. We have to follow the quality control standards and quality assurance agencies to ensure the quality and the safety of the product being developed. As we all know that for food products, there will be a symbol called FSSAI. Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has to certify the food packets or the foods that we are using day by day. And there is another standard authorities like ISO, ISI, etc. available in India. Next is manufacturing constraints. While manufacturing a particular product, there may arise some restrictions like the shortage of labor for manufacturing the product or the deficiency of the raw materials or the equipment used for developing that particular product. Next is ergonomical and aesthetic constraints. The product that is being developed should be user friendly, attractive, visually pleasing and easy to use. So these all are the various design constraints. The designer has to identify all these constraints and to plan accordingly so that the product will be successful. Next is establishing functions or the product concepts associated in design process. Here the designer has to identify all the functions to be performed by the proposed product. After that identify the functions to be carried out to implement this particular product. For that purpose they have to perform some risk analysis in each of the implementation phases. So the designer has to ensure that the every phase of implementation is risk free. There will be various functions performed in this implementation. The first one is engineering functions like estimating the cost for developing the particular product. It is termed as cost estimation and they have to follow production design, concept design, simulation using 3D models, 2D models, graphical diagrams, etc. The next is manufacturing functions that is assembling the product, determination of tools and machinery used for producing that particular product, purchasing the raw material for making that product, allotting the labor, machines, etc. for product development, etc. Next is quality control functions. In quality control functions, we have to properly do checking for regularity and safety of the product being developed. We have to perform design auditing, energy auditing, etc. In design auditing, 
in the audit team will ensure that the design is as per the specification or requirement given by the customer and in the energy auditing the energy auditing team will ensure that the energy is used in an efficient and effective manner the next is commercial functions here we are discussing the various functions related to service like marketing sales how to store these produced materials in the warehouse how to pack and ship the product etc the next is generating design alternatives for a design problem there will be multiple solutions for example we can design a mobile phone in different modes like touch screen phone keypad phone or integrated battery or removable battery mode etc every design solution has its own positives and negatives so the designer has to finally choose the best feasible design from the various design alternatives the designer has to choose the best feasible design by considering the various trade off aspects that is expected by the customer so these are the various phases of design process let's understand this with the case study of a carry bag so in the first phase is identifying and detailing the customer requirements the customer is coming to the developing company and they are asking that i need a carry bag it can hold up to 3 kg of weight it should be eco friendly and biodegradable so this is the requirement given by the customer the next phase is setting the design objectives in this phase the designer has to ensure whether we can design a carry bag using the existing methodology whether it can hold 3 kg of weight so that it should be defined in an eco friendly economical and efficient manner whether we can develop the carry bag in the allotted budget allotted time etc all these actions are performed in this particular phase the next phase is identifying the design constraints so here the designer has to identify what are the constraints or what are the restrictions in making this particular product here there are three restrictions first one is whether the product can hold 3 kg of weight the next one is it should be biodegradable and it should be eco friendly product and the third one is not mentioned by the customer but the developing company has to ensure that the developed carry bag should follow the quality guidelines issued by the government of india next one is establishing the functions in developing a carry bag they have to perform very function like cost estimation for developing a particular carry bag what are the dimensions used for developing the carry bag the 2d model or the pictorial representation of the design here you can see the pictorial representation of the carry bag the next thing is generating the design alternatives a carry bag can be implemented in different forms and in different dimensions the different forms can be like it can be made of plastic it can be made of a paper bag it can be of cloth it can be of jute etc so there are different alternative solutions are there from this the designer has to choose the best design that is apt for our customer requirement so selection of best feasible carry bag design is the final phase here it may be chosen as jute why jute because it will carry 3 kg of weight not only 3 kg it can hold up to even 10 kg of weight it is biodegradable it is eco friendly it should follow the quality guidelines of our government and it is durable the durability of a jute bag is much better than the plastic bag and cloth bag and jute bag is biodegradable whereas plastic bag is not biodegradable paper bag cannot hold too much weight so the best feasible solution from this four alternative option is the jute bag so this is how a designer should carry out the design process for a particular problem thank you